have the capacity to be creative is the difference in how we create ideas. Over the years, we have spoken to many different artists about a range of mediums. Talent is one thing, but having the idea to express yourself is the largest factor in what separates art. So how do artists generate ideas and are there any common factors? For me anyway, you will always be true to, to who you are when you paint. You will only, be, you will only paint what's, what's going to come out of you. And it's the same for everyone, whether you, whether you are a painter or not a painter, when you sit down with a piece of paper and, and some paints, it's, I, I find it fascinating how different people will approach painting. I'm not a great user of sketchbooks. I, I like that spontaneity. I, 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 I tend to just work with the, the canvas once I, once I start, um, the canvas dis almost starts to decide the direction that something goes. That's why I work on so many pieces at once, because it's almost like one piece of work would just have, it all happen too quickly and, 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 and go wrong. I have to have sort of multiple things going on at once. And I'll flip between them. I'll see something that's happened in a piece of work and think, oh, well, that's, I know what I need to do on that now. Everyone's either commenting on something to do with the human state of mind or their or human interaction or how humans are in a space or something we do. And it becomes extract, abstracted, but it was always figurative in, in the first place. And I think it's a very simple subject, but massive, because we're always changing. Humans are always changing. You know, we, we evolve and then so painting evolves because so many more things come in. Though restrictions with your craft may differ, it seems that anything can inspire you to create work, not just experimentation. I use pottery wheel, which um, is believed to be one of the oldest machines humankind has, has used to make things. With starting off with, with your own idea, you, you get inspiration and you can't even help it whether you watch a telly program or you go to an exhibition or you have a walk in the park. You get inspiration and that is then mixed with your own ideas. Pottery is obviously um, a craft, but I also believe that it has an artistic side and um, you know you can make you can make anything. Though the inspiration itself may differ, the next step seems to be incubation, manipulating inspiration into constructing an idea, then applying that to your own way of working. When I come into the studio, I'm usually prepared, um, in my head anyway, prepared with what I want to do. I don't start a painting if I can't visualise anything, although the final result might be quite different. From a starting point, I have to have some idea in my head. This is a picture that I've created actually um, about three times, but I've always imagined her as somebody uh, who would be walking around the Olympic Games holding a standard. She's got a very proud look. For my work, a peaceful atmosphere is very important. I, I tend to do my good work on my own. I don't even have music playing, which I know some people like. And I need to be at peace in myself as well, so not have had an argument with somebody or anything like that. So we've heard the creative process of some artists, but how is that affected when artists work together? Recently, a collaboration started between a poet and a printmaker. When I'm starting to think about writing a poem, an idea might come to my mind and then I just try and capture it. But in the process of writing it, something surprising will happen that I haven't expected. I'm always looking for new ideas. I will go out into the fens and actually working on an environment that I'm familiar with is really important too. So maybe after repetition and I'll choose a spot that I want to work with and I'll take it from there. There's a certain point where I'll start to prepare the plate and I've got the ideas of what I've seen that day, the colours and the mark making that I'll produce will reflect that. And there'll come a point where the plate takes over, I have to think about the balance 
um, and then that becomes something different. So how have they affected each other's way of thinking and has it changed their perspective? The collaboration between Iona and I started when I approached her and in fact her work had been a bit of an inspiration for me in looking at the fence and in being able to articulate some of the things that I wanted to say. There have been difficulties along the way and I'm quite, I suppose, quite stubborn. I'm used to working on my own and then suddenly having to open up to someone else and talk about something which is very personal to you, your artwork, wasn't easy to begin with. Difficulties were probably at the beginning when we thought we don't know what we're doing and we don't know how to measure if we were being successful or not. That all took time. We enjoyed going for walks, but I'm not sure all the way along we could have known that we were doing what felt like useful work. Working with another artist has changed my creative process. It's made me think in things in a different way, just by walking and the whole thought process and the approach to a plate. The work I've produced more recently has been an outcome of working with Kate. Through long symmetric lines, the eraser smooths and darts. Vibrating car and sunlight with the long fingers of the Wiccan fen wind. If artists struggle with compromising their creativity, or if working with others affects the outcome of your work, then how can you teach others to think creatively without indirectly influencing them? I help students with their creative process by encouragement really, by help, by seeking to get them to gain confidence in what it is they're doing and to uh, embrace the process of creativity. The, the struggle is to get them to start to think for themselves and not to, to direct them too much. Where I think I come in uh, and a teacher comes in is to help them assess what they do. In my own personal experience, if I stay on my own too long, my creativity ends up being like a tumble dryer. It just goes round and round and round, same old, same old, same old. And by looking at other people, talking to my peers or looking for someone historically, um, I could I have much more, I have greater potential to break out. If you work on your own, I'm not sure sure that's so healthy. Students, when they when they're studying art, uh, are in an academic environment. With art and design, it's it's always a, a high level of subjectivity within the judgment that you make about quality of work. You're just out to please yourself. You know, okay, good, good luck to you, but I don't think that's how the world works, and not, and not in art and design either. In order to make a living or to achieve academically, it seems that creativity needs to be compromised based on what others think about your work. On a commercial value, it is a valid point. All artists have to consider whether their own opinion on their work is more or less important than what others think. So looking at the common factors, we've seen that there is a basic map in the creative process of artists, inspiration, incubation and creation. How we are inspired by other artists may manipulate one or more of these processes, but surely the most creative thing to do is to break out of this chain and to consider our thought process in a different way rather than just generate a new idea.